Hello everyone, my name is Leo Foster Rubend Anna Opum. I'm a naturalist at heart, an indigenous by heritage, and a primary school teacher by profession. The name of this project is Fostering the Forest. Our school, SK Baklaland, is the furthest one to reach in Lawas district of Sarawak. It is located in the highland of Baklaland and surrounded by pristine tropical rainforest with amazing species of flora and fauna. From the forest we came to the forest we returned. Being indigenous in the 21st century, one must not forget the fact that our ancestors once called the forest their home. Before there were any modern civilizations, the forest is their sacred land. If we really want our future indigenous generation to flourish, to become truly empowered by their roots, we have to allow them to love the forest first before we ask them to save it, because the forest is a part of their indigeneity. Therefore, we at SK Baklaland have created an environmental education program that is called Fostering the Forest, which caters to the Limbawang community of Baklaland. To foster, in other words, is to take care. When a person has a foster child, that person will have to take care of that child for a certain period of time, right? Therefore, we would like our pupils to apply this concept and treat the forest as one of their greatest possessions in life within the course of six years, studying in its primary school. By the end of year six, we hope to produce junior naturalists amongst them. That is our goal. Prior to the birth of this program, we have encountered four problems which needed our immediate attention. Firstly, there is no proper platform to share indigenous knowledge between teachers, elders, youths and the pupils. Secondly, the indigenous community here is not very well informed of the climate change crisis which is happening right now as we speak. Thirdly, Pupils are spending too much time indoors on gadgets such as smartphones and computer, which made them more vulnerable to negative moods, especially during this pandemic. Lastly, this place has a huge potential as an ecotourism destination, but a portion of the community does not have the necessary confidence and skills to pursue this ambition. Therefore, we have outlined four objectives for this program. Fostering the forest aims to mediate indigenous knowledge, communicate climate change, balance screen time, and support ecotourism. Firstly, we have to connect teachers, elders, youths, and pupils in order to mediate indigenous knowledge. This is a perfect model to be adopted during the school closure as it involves people from the community themselves. The teachers will conduct a workshop to train the elders and youths in using the Fostering the Forest Handbook. The elders will become the coordinator of this program in their respective villages where they will guide the participants based on the handbook and share their indigenous knowledge. In order to ensure sustainability of this program, our pupils who have completed year six will be enlisted as this program's alumni so that they can help us out with the activities whenever they are able to. The youths will be there as well as to assist the elders in terms of documenting, such as taking videos, pictures, and getting feedbacks from the participants for us. The pupils will participate in all of the activities based on the handbook and they will become our ambassador of this program. Secondly, the community has to acknowledge the role of the forest in climate change. After oceans, forests are the world's largest storehouses of carbon. They have to know the cause and effect of deforestation. When we take away the forest, it is not just the trees that go. The entire ecosystem begins to fall apart. They have to know the ecosystem biodiversity and the hope of by knowing what actually lives within this forest. These people will start to care because that will affect their livelihood as well. And the most important thing is they have to learn how to manage the forest sustainably to avoid 
over harvesting and prevent unnecessary forest burning for crop cultivation. All this can be done by organizing community talk, video screening, poster contests, and flyer distribution through this program, just to mention a few which touch upon the subject of climate change, particularly how forests can help in combating this crisis. Thirdly, we have to merge technology and nature in order to balance screen time. iNaturalist Applications is an excellent example of how we can marry technology and nature at the same time. Instead of having our pupils to just play games on their smartphones all day long, why not put it into good use for nature exploration? iNaturalist is a free platform used to record observations of plants and animals in nature using photographs. Pupils can share what they have found and contribute to a global data set of biodiversity information used for both science and conservation. This will improve their observation skills and connect them to a global community that will help them to become a better naturalist. Lastly, we have to scaffold related skills amongst our pupils from an early age in order to support ecotourism. Based on the six competencies of deep learning, through this program we aim to develop individuals who can be characterized as a proud ambassador to their own indigenous culture. Individuals who are environmentally conscious and ready to tackle the climate change crisis with the rest of the world. Individuals who are willing to collaborate effectively with the community in order to develop sustainable ecotourism in this place. Individuals who can communicate their ecotourism products proficiently to their potential clients. Individuals who are able to generate creative ideas to promote this place as an ecotourism destination. Individuals who are able to think critically on the impact of the ecotourism of this place to the community and potential clients. And here we have a list of practical careers in ecotourism which our pupils can choose from for their future undertakings by working with what nature has to offer. Becoming a naturalist, conservationist, tourist guide, homestay operator and cultural event organiser, just to mention a few. Our short-term goal for this programme is to produce 10 episodes of Fostering the Forest by the end of December, which will be posted on our social media platform. And our long-term goal for this program is to produce junior naturalists amongst our pupils by the end of year six. In order to achieve our short-term goal, the nature awareness quality will be fostered through our science niche groupings, namely Insectifier, a study on entomology, Plantopia, a study on botany, bird watchers, a study on ornithology, and Ecologic, a study on the ecosystem. These studies will be carried out in our very own botanical park, which is in a forest setting the first of its kind in Sarawak, to be run by the school itself. And this is one of the ecotourism attractions in Baklalan, which has been established by International Tropical Timber Organization, Sarawak Forestry, and recently we have received generous fundings from Ministry of Tourism, Arts and Culture Sarawak to improve the facilities in this park. We will cover two episodes per month to showcase the learning of the pupils on the studies mentioned earlier. In order to achieve our long-term goal, we will develop a naturalist kit which comprises of necessary tools to aid the learning, such as a field journal, magnifying glass, simple binoculars, insect collecting net, Critter cage, ruler, and syllable plastic bag to collect samples. 
We will also present badges to the pupils to reward their learning. In order to assess the learning, our pupils have to take the junior naturalist assessment in their final year, which consists of a field evaluation to test their naturalist skill on site, a written examination to measure their knowledge, and final presentation on a selected topic related to nature, which they feel strongly about. Then finally, the Junior Naturalist Award will be given to the pupils who excel based on this assessment. As for the grant money, we plan to spend 40% to develop our naturalist kit, print reward badges, and purchase the Junior Naturalist Award trophies. 30% of the budget is to buy field guides and reading materials related to our nature studies. Another 20% will be spent on field attire, such as reflective vests and boots to be used during our field trip in the forest. The remaining 10% will be used to print fostering the forest handbook and other print materials related to this program. To conclude, what we don't know, we will not value. What we don't value, we will not protect. What we don't protect, we will lose. If we can get our indigenous pupils to master the knowledge of all those interesting species of flora and fauna that we can find here in Baklaland, that itself will inspire them to become the experts of their own surroundings thus leading to job opportunities in the future by working with what nature has to offer. From the forest we came to the forest we returned. On that note, thank you for listening.